we are going to be talking about maximum power transfer. In this video, I'm going to go over the process involved in taking a complicated circuit and finding the value of resistance that you can connect to that circuit in order to absorb the maximum amount of power. The first thing you might wanna do is take your circuit that's more complex and then simplify it down to a Thevenin model, a voltage and a resistor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write an equation that tells me the amount of power absorbed by RL in terms of my input voltage and RI. So there's a few ways to write power for a resistor. The first is that we know P is equal to I multiplied by delta V, the potential across the component. But you can also write P is equal to I squared R. And you can also write that P is equal to V squared divided by R. And these two are based on this equation, but just rearranged using the Ohm's law equation. And I'm going to use this equation to relate the power through RL. In order to use this equation, I need to find this particular voltage. And that's going to be the voltage across my resistor RL. So one way I can do that is through voltage division. If this is VO, I can say that VO is equal to VI multiplied by RL divided by RL plus RI. And you can use voltage division to find this, but you can also do this through any form of circuit analysis you like to derive this relationship. So now I know that this quantity right here is this V right here. So if we plug that in, what we'll have is one over RL, because that is going to be the RL that we have, multiplied by VI RL divided by RL plus RI. And this quantity is going to be squared because this is our squared voltage term. And this is equal to the power absorbed by RL. Before we go any further, let's think about this problem in terms of extremes. So if we were to set RL equal to zero, then the power absorbed would be equal to I squared RL. Now setting this to zero is going to make I a larger value, but at the end of the day, we multiply by zero because RL is equal to zero, and that's going to give us no power. I could also go the other way with it. I could say RL is very large and is approaching infinity. And I could write that power is equal to V squared divided by R. Well, if R is approaching infinity, then this thing is going to approach zero and I get no power in my load resistor. So that tells us that the value of RL that's going to absorb the most power is somewhere between zero and infinity. Since that's such a large range, we're going to have to do something called optimization to mathematically figure out where the maximum value would be. So if I had a graph, a function, and I were to take the derivative of this graph, find the slope of the line along different instantaneous points, there's these maximum and minimum points where the slope is going to be equal to zero. So the idea of optimization is that you can take the derivative of a function and set it to zero, and that value is going to be either a maximum or a minimum point on your graph. And that's what we're going to have to do for a function of the power absorbed by RL. So before we start taking derivatives, let's simplify this a bit. We can write that the power in RL is equal to one over RL multiplied by VI squared, RL squared, and in the denominator, I'll have RL squared plus 2RL RI plus RI squared. Now I can cancel this RL, and this is a little bit easier to work with. Now I want to take the derivative of my power equation with respect to RL. And to take the derivative of this, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. And that says if you have a function of f divided by a function of g, then the derivative is going to be f prime g minus g prime f divided by g squared. So we can do that for a function, and we're taking this derivative with respect to RL. So everything else we're going to treat as a constant. So f prime in this case is going to be the derivative of vi squared multiplied by RL. So we're going to be left with vi squared. Now this is multiplied by g, and that's our denominator, and we can write that in unchanged. So we'll have RL squared plus 2RL RI plus RI squared. So we'll say minus the derivative of our denominator, which is going to be 2RL plus 2RI. And the derivative of RI squared is going to be 0. So that's it for G prime. And we have to multiply that by F. So that's going to be multiplied by VI squared RL. And this whole thing is going to be divided by G squared. But the good news is because we're doing optimization and we want to find when this thing is equal to zero, we don't really have to worry about G squared because we need to know when the numerator is equal to zero. So we're going to leave that part of the derivative out and we're just going to solve for when that numerator is equal to zero. 
Now I'm going to multiply everything by one over vi squared. That way we can get rid of vi. Also in this step, I'm going to distribute in the negative sign and rl to this term. So we can rewrite this as rl squared plus 2rl ri plus ri squared minus 2rl squared minus 2rl ri and that is going to be equal to zero and we're able to cancel out these terms and simplifying this we end up with rl squared is equal to ri squared and this means that rl is equal to ri now mathematically you would add a plus or minus here but resistors can only be positive in summary if you're given a complex circuit and you have to find the maximum amount of power that could be absorbed by a load resistor r RL, then you have to know the input resistance or the Thevenin resistance. And once you know the input resistance or the Thevenin resistance, all you have to do is make RL be equal to RI or R Thevenin, depending on how you labeled it. And once you have set that value of RL, you can solve the circuit to find the power absorbed by RL under that condition using any of these three equations to find the power absorbed in that resistor. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If so, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.